Hello and welcome to my January 2024 monthly roundup and empties. Um, I'm going to start off with a couple of non-makeup items and then we're going to move into the makeup and I actually don't think that I have that much to talk about in terms of makeup because I haven't really bought or you know there hasn't been that much going on in January. So first off let's start with the non-makeup things. Um, I'm going to start with something that I never really show on my channel and I don't think I am <laughs> going to show it but this item in particular is just so special that I felt like I need to show it to you. It is a piece of clothing that I bought off of Vestiar Collective. Uh, Vestiar Collective, I don't know if you're familiar with it, is a platform, like a website, where you can buy pre-loved luxury uh, items. I learned about this website from someone who is into luxury beauty. Maybe it was even Sophia C's beauty, I'm not sure, but I've known about this website for a while. I've purchased from there before. Um, I think a couple of years ago I showed you the pair of Manolo Blahniks that I bought from there that I absolutely love and I cannot wait to have the opportunity to wear again this spring and summer. And I will occasionally hang out on this website either, you know, fantasizing about which luxury bag would I buy if I were to ever buy a luxury bag or looking at pieces of clothing. Not that it's happening anytime soon, but just in case anyone was wondering, I think I've settled on a Lady Dior. I think the Lady Dior is my bag. Anyway, um, clothing though. So this is not the first time that I purchased clothing off of Vestiar Collective. And you might know the story already because I've told it before, but uh, again, like maybe about two years ago, I bought this beautiful woolen Alexander McQueen dress from Vestiar. Um, and I got a bit burned from the experience, not by Vestiar Collective. They didn't do anything wrong. It's just that sizing when it comes to clothes can be so incredibly tricky. So at the time I had ordered the dress, it was a size, I want to say... 38 or 40 but it was Italian sizing so when the dress arrived I thought it would be EU size uh, 36 but it turned out that it's more of like a EU size 34 and you know as skinny as I am there was no chance in hell I would fit in a dress that is a size 34 I could put it on but it was obviously too small for me it was just obviously a size too small for me I was absolutely devastated because it was such a beautiful dress such a beautiful piece of clothing and you can find these types of uh, items for really good prices on Vestiar so unfortunately I had to resell the dress luckily Vestiar has a very good policy with that you can basically uh, re... <laughs> hey Nicola! Zou je alsjeblieft de deur dicht doen, want het komt heel wel geluid. So we've been joined by Nicola, quite obviously, uh, and I kind of lost my trail of thought. Oh yeah, so I was able to resell the item basically immediately uh, without any extra charges to like put it on back, back up on the website and someone snagged it for the price that I bought it. So essentially I only lost the money that I had paid for the shipping of the item. Uh, anyway, after that I was so afraid to order anything else because I think sizing is so confusing. Sizing can be different between brands, even between eras, okay? Something that was a size 36 in the 90s might not at all correspond to a size 36 uh, in present day. So after that I was a bit iffy on purchasing items but I was hanging out on Vestiar and I you know I've been having this obsession with blazers this past year so I was looking for blazers and then I laid eyes on this beautiful vintage Dior blazer. I think they were selling it maybe for 220 and I I don't know I made an offer for 200 and they uh agreed on the offer. So without much thinking about it and also because uh, it was my birthday in the beginning of January, I turned uh, 41, I thought maybe I can make myself a little birthday pressy and buy this blazer for myself. So this is the first item that I want to show to you today. So this is going to be a little bit difficult to show but this is my new uh, red blazer from Dior. Vind je mooi? Ja. Ja, prachtig hè? Jouw lievelingskleur is rood. Yeah. Yeah. Nicola's favorite color is red, so he basically approves of my Christian Dior blazer. It is so beautiful. I'm going to show it to you up close in a second, but I just wanted to uh, also give you like a wider view of how majestic it is. Um, I did, like based on the photos, I couldn't really tell how thick it would be. I thought it would be something I can uh, put on, you know, underneath um, a coat, but it's not the case. This is essentially more of like a blazer that you wear as a light jacket in like the spring and summer months. It's not really something that you can put underneath another jacket. So first of all, here is the uh, etiquette and the only reason I'm showing you the etiquette is because I was very curious from 
it's a vintage item right from which era does it come from and the person who was selling it d didn't really know i think it's probably someone who like a uh, has like a vintage store or something and they just have the items they don't really know much about them so i searched a little bit online and i found this website where they had like etiquettes from um items from the or from the past i don't know 50 60 years with a sort of like corresponding era from when this comes from so based on the uh, etiquette and the cut of this blazer i my prediction is late 80s early 90s because what is very uh, obvious about this it has like the big shoulder pads and it's not a slim fit i think that modern items have a bit more of like a slim fit to them this is definitely more of like a straight cut and it looks almost a little bit oversized it's a size i think 36 it wears more like a 38 but i definitely think this is also a part of the the way this was made to fit the era that it corresponds to like it definitely screams to me late 80s beginning 90s when people were wearing a bit more like over uh, like oversized shoulders and like a wider cuts and stuff like that so the sleeves are beautiful they are almost a little bit like flared uh, over here towards the uh, end and the buttons are just so pretty. Look at the detailing of this. Isn't that just absolutely gorgeous? And I don't know, the fabric is beautiful. Everything about it is beautiful. It looks so new that I would never have thought that it's an item that's already being uh, worn by someone. I think it's just in really good condition. It's still way too cold for me to wear it uh, right now, but I cannot wait for the uh, spring to come so that I can wear this and feel like an absolute queen. Uh, speaking of feeling like an absolute queen, uh, my husband bought me a 30 ml bottle of Angel's Share. So we talked about Angel's, Angel's Share in my I think monthly roundup and empties for the pre or maybe in my yearly favorites it's basically one of my new favorite perfumes uh the bottle of this is so pretty so first of all uh, if you're not familiar with angel share this is a perfume by killian and it is if i had to summarize the notes of this perfume it is a boozy apple pie basically autumn in a bottle but it also comes in the most beautiful bottle because i think it's imitating a little bit like a glass for like cognac or you know one of those like heavier boozy things that the perfume actually smells like so i love everything about it i love the pe uh, i love the presentation of it i love the scent uh, i love that it's a present from my husband for my birthday and i just wanted to quickly show it to you and with that we can move on to the uh, makeup adjacent category and talk very briefly about the uh, maki a set the squirrel uh, brush set from sonia g that she released for oh my gosh how do i hold this to show them to you okay let me hold them up like this for you that she released for the uh, holiday season uh, causing quite a bit of uproar due to the limited quantities of this so the reason people were going bonkers about this set is because it has the most beautiful um detailing here on the brush so this is the maki a technique which i also talked about in the uh video that i made on these brushes but the fact that they are also uh i think blue squirrel which is a type of bristle that is used a bit less commonly and she usually reserves it for limited edition collections and not really for her uh, regular lineup uh, i've been really happy with this brush set i've been using it a lot i'm mostly very surprised with the bigger size brush because based on the shape of this i really thought i'm not going to have much use for this brush but i've actually really been enjoying using it as like a one and done in fact i i should have probably used it for my one and done today i just kind of forgot about it but it's very soft it buffs out product beautifully and it has the very interesting functionality that it fits in your crease so you can apply color and then you can intensify it in your crease um, because of the shape of the brush the other three i use all the time so this is the smudger this is the little pencil brush and this is a flat shader brush i know she's doing one final restock of these brushes on february 6th uh, so if you didn't manage to get them before and you really 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 wanted to have them you will have one more chance there was someone who was really pissed at me for being able to buy these brushes but i don't want to like comment on that too much because we don't concern ourselves with such kind of negativity here let's talk about a couple of pet magrat items that i have on my uh, monthly roundup and empties first and foremost i want to talk about a product that is not new this is pet bronzer in the shade what's the wrong shade 
Okay, I'm back with the correct shade. This is the shade Nude Honey. And I've talked about these bronzers. I've mentioned how much I love the formula. I love all the three colors that I have. But I wanted to shout out Nude Honey because I knew when I purchased these bronzers that now in the winter months is when I'm going to get so much use out of Nude Honey. And that is really the case. I've been reaching for this bronzer on almost like every other day that I do my makeup because if I want something that is a little bit more neutral in tone, that's not leaning like too red or too orange or too much in any sort of like undertone category I will go for Nude Honey because it is just so perfect for my skin tone I've been enjoying it so much so I really wanted to give it a shout out Another item from Pat McGrath Labs that I have mentioned before but I really wanted to mention again because again I've really been enjoying it so very much is the shade Elson This is one of her matte trans lipsticks one of her OG matte trans colors that she released. It is basically a classic red and it is just such a beautiful red lipstick. I can't tell you how much I love this lipstick. It is um, slightly deeper compared to... I don't know what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to like make my swatch a little bit more interesting. Let's just like do this like a normal person. So this is a swatch for um, Elson over here. I've worn Elson so much in my videos and on my Instagram. It's just slightly deeper compared to Ribbon from Lisa Aldridge, which is uh, another one of my absolute favorite threads, if not my favorite my current favorite red lipstick in my collection but I just wanted to mention what a beautiful shade Elson is. There is a reason why it's a classic from Pat. Uh, I love the formula of this lipstick because it has just a bit of like shine to it even though it's a matte lipstick so it wears very comfortably and it doesn't get dry until very late in the day. Um, it is very long lasting, it is a beautiful flattering shade of red and I've just really been enjoying wearing it. Now a new product from Pat that I actually received Oh no, I ordered a trio of the Satin Allures that I gave as presents to my uh, sister-in-law and my mother-in-law and I decided to add a little something something for myself so I ordered another one of the uh, Skin Fetish Liquid Eyeshadows from Pat and I ordered the shade Cosmic Chartreuse. It's almost shocking that I hadn't ordered this shade before because it has Mariam written all over it uh, but you know these were still on sale and the reason I didn't want to order this is because I thought I had a dupe of this shade. I couldn't remember what the dupe was um, and I was sort of hoping that this shade would be very similar to Astraline from the Divine Droid Quint. One second. So this shadow over here, but unfortunately they're not really similar at all. Um, the Astraline is really much more of like your classic lime, whereas Cosmic Chartreuse is exactly what it says it is. It is a chartreuse shade and the dupe that I have is in the Sorcery palette from Lisa Eldridge. Now with that said, I use this uh, eyeshadow slightly differently than I would use uh, the shade from the Sorcery palette. It was still 50% off when I bought it, so I'm not too mad about it. Um, the only thing I wish is that this shade was a little bit more sparkly, that it was as sparkly as for example Platinum Bronze from the same line because well, I love the tone of this shade, Jade. It's such a beautiful chartreuse shade and there is definitely, you know, shine to it. I'm not saying that it's not shiny and sparkly, but if you compare it to something like Platinum Bronze, which is like in your face sparkly and it instantly gives you this like wet lid effect, I think Cosmic Chartreuse is a little bit more subtle in that way. But I knew going in that that might be the case because I have another one of her liquid eyeshadows that is a little bit more on the subtle side of sparkle um, and I thought already Cosmic Chartreuse belongs to that category but now it has been confirmed. It's a beautiful shade but it's not a very glittery and very sparkly shade. It is more subtly sparkly. But I have really been loving using it over top of other eyeshadows or as a base for eyeshadows as you have already seen in the pet pairing that I'm wearing uh, today. Um, what I have loved doing with this eyeshadow is using it as a base for the sparkly shade in the product that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, the Eclat Nui quote from Chanel, specifically with this eyeshadow here. So I will put this one. Well, actually, I can show you. We're not really talking about Eclat Nui yet, but I'm just going to layer a bit of the sparkly shade over top of this so you can see the really interesting effect that it creates. I don't know whether it's coming across on camera, but I promise you, if you have both of these products, try using Cosmic Chartreuse as a little bit of a base for this shade and I promise you, you're going to create the most interesting, neutral, with slightly khaki tones to it uh, type of eye look. It is just glorious. 
Now, since I have it in my hands, we might as well just talk about it. So, in the beginning of the year, uh, Chanel released a collection, actually two collections. Uh, the one that had the all the like winter blushes and something with Le Beige. And then they released this quad and maybe some eyeliners with it. I'm not actually completely sure. But they released this quad and the internet basically went bonkers over it because it seems to be such a like interesting color story presented in this beautiful uh, baked texture and initially i wasn't sure what to do about this but i can tell you as soon as i laid eyes on it i was instantly attracted to this color story and then i watched a couple of videos um and i went in store and i swatched the quad for myself and i fell in love with it even more and i have to say i was also very lucky that I bought it almost 50% off between a sale and a couple of coupon codes that I had stocked up on. I bought this for 35 euros, I want to say, when the original price is 65. So really not that shabby. But I know a lot of you are probably wondering, would I have purchased this full price? Um, and what I can tell you is now that I have used the quad, now that I have it in my possession, I think I would have gladly paid the full price to own this eyeshadow palette because I think it is that special. It's just such an interesting smoky color story with such an interesting combination of undertones and this sparkly, well sparkly, like metallic glittery type of shade that has the most interesting like um, silvery grey khaki tone to it is so unique and so special. I don't think that there's anything that I've ever seen that is quite like this eyeshadow here. The only thing separating this eyeshadow quote from it being sheer perfection, and I already think it's at perfection levels, but like sheer perfection, um, is this shade here. This like matte taupe shade has a bit of the tendency to hard pan because it is a bit too emollient and also for my taste it could have been a little bit deeper in tone to differentiate it a little bit more from the metallic taupe shade that is present in here. They work very well together to create a very um, elegant, understated, neutral taupe look, but I just wish this was a little bit deeper in tone so that it you can really differentiate between these two and that it was um, the, form the same formula as the black eyeshadow because now I can see that it has the tendency to hard pan a little bit but overall a beautiful color story that you can create actually quite a variety of different looks with. I don't know for how long this is going to be around, I actually saw that on the the, the website of the shop where I bought it from, this is already sold out. I think it's still on the Chanel, like the Dutch Chanel website. I was not able to find it on Douglas anymore either. So I think it is slowly starting to sell out. So if you're in the Netherlands and you're still doubting, I would say make up your mind sooner rather than later. And last but not least, let's talk about the two most surprising items that I have purchased in the last month. And these are the reformulated uh, Dior Rouge Dior lipsticks. I picked up one of the shades in the velvet formula and one of the shades in the satin formula and you can actually see me wearing one of the satin shades. In fact, I've made a whole video about this, so if you want to see both of them demoed, just go and watch this video. But today I have the uh, satin lipstick on. This is the shade 760 uh, Icon or Icon. I don't really know how to pronounce it. These are fabulous. These lipsticks are so nice. Let me quickly swatch an uh, Icon for you right here. So this is, like I said, their new reformulated setting formula. Just to add very quickly, I don't really know anything about their older formula because I've never tried Dior lipsticks before. So unfortunately, I can't tell you anything about their... I can't compare the old formula and the new formula. In terms of packaging, I'm also pretty sure that they've made some changes because um, it's quite easy to distinguish the old lipsticks from the new one based on the shape of the bullet. These have like a more classic uh, shaped bullet. And I think the older ones have a round shape to them. Um, I think they've improved the packaging because it has a magnetic closure. It has a lot of like very interesting detailing. It is very hefty in the hand. And the velvet shade that I bought is the shade 866 together. And these lipsticks are just beautiful to look at because they have the same velvet enveloping that Lisa Eldridge uh, velvet lipsticks have. And for some reason, that just looks so incredibly attractive to me. And the shade 866 is just the most beautiful, sort of like desaturated, um, almost vampy looking red. It is beautiful. Again, you can uh, see me wearing this lipstick in the video where I demoed both of these. 
glorious color. I don't really have a red that is quite like this. To me, this is like a deeper version of Enchantment from Lisa Eldridge. So if you have Enchantment and you imagine the more saturated version of that, I think that is what we're talking about here with this Dior shade. Now, in terms of the formula and the performance of these, uh, what can I liken them to? So the Velvet formula is not like the Velvets or the Matte Trans from uh, Pat McGrath Labs. These have a little bit more of substantiality and like thickness to the formula. These are more lightweight. Because of that, they also don't wear as long as the Pat McGrath Matte Trans lipsticks. For example, the Matte Trans in Elson on me definitely lasts and performs better than uh, together from the Dior uh, lipstick line. But I don't really mind if a lipstick wears off and I have to reapply it as long as the reapplication is not a pain in my ass. Like, you know how sometimes when you have to reapply a matte lipstick, like matte lipsticks can get quite, you know, dry and um, they can ball up a little bit on the lips. And then if you have to reapply a little bit more of that over top of what's going on already on your lips, it can be quite unpleasant and quite unflattering looking. So you would have to like wipe away almost a lot of the old lipstick and you would need something a little bit uh, oil-based to properly um, move the product out of your lips. Not the case with these because they just sort of like wear away. There's almost like nothing left in the center of your lips, for example, so you can just easily go and reapply another layer. And they feel they, they feel like nothing on the lips. They're so incredibly comfortable. Both the velvet and the satin. Um, the satin is not like the luxuriously loosened formula from Lisa Eldridge, for sure. I think it is not as shiny um, and it wears in a completely different way. It wears much more like a lightweight satin lipstick. Again, not necessarily a formula that I'm very familiar with because I don't really have uh, a lot of other satin formulas besides the Luxuriously Loosened from Lisa Eldridge and these are very different from the Luxuriously Loosened. But again, the satin formula feels like nothing, wears like nothing, so incredibly comfortable. The only downside that I can mention about these lipsticks is the price, because they've increased the price of these to be 50 something euros. Again, I was able to buy them 25% off, but you know, still quite expensive. Uh, and they're scented. Unfortunately, they are scented. Not, I don't feel like they're as bad as my Rouge Dior Addict lipstick. So I have one of their Addicts, which is, which is the very shiny uh, formula. And that one not only is scented, but I can almost taste it. There is something in that lipstick that I can almost taste and I really don't like the taste of that. Uh, but these are just scented and after a while the, the scent sort of like wears away. But for example, I applied Icon about maybe like 40 minutes ago because I was filming a video prior to this one and I can still smell it. So the smell lingers. It takes quite some hours before it is completely gone. Uh, maybe a little upside of these though is that they are refillable so that's really cool i really like that everything about these just surprised me in the best possible way and i'm so happy with them it's a little bit difficult not to go back on the website to pick out more colors but uh, i've decided that instead of trying more colors of these i'm maybe going to try other luxury lipsticks so um, expect probably more luxury lipsticks to be coming into my collection this year because i'm just now that the gates have opened I'm very curious to try other luxury lipsticks. Okay, great. This is pretty much a wrap on the roundup part of this video. And now I'm going to spend a few more minutes talking about the empties that I have accumulated in the past month. I have a sample here from Black Phantom, which is one of the samples that I picked up from uh, by Killian when I was ordering a little exploratory set from them uh, a couple of months ago. It was when I discovered Angel's Share. But Black Phantom is supposed to have like coffee notes to it and chocolate notes to it and to me it just smells like a mint perfume for some reason i don't know i can't i can't detect the coffee i can't detect the chocolate or maybe that's how chocolate and coffee smell together they smell like a man i'm not really sure this perfume was really not my favorite uh, and what is also not my favorite is that the little spritzer was basically not functioning well already from the beginning so Killian is an expensive brand and I expect that when they offer me a sample at the very least the little 
perfume sample bottles are going to work properly. This was a pain in the ass to use and I think that there might be still a couple of microliters here that I'm unable to get out because it just the pump just doesn't really work so I might have to like break it off or something I don't know but because I also wasn't super impressed with this scent I don't necessarily feel the need to squeeze every last microliter out of it an actual makeup item here, the Too Faced uh, Laminating Brow Wax. So this is the Fluff and Hold uh, Laminating Brow Wax. And I was introduced to this uh, makeup product by Martina. I don't know if she's watching, probably she's not, but if she is, thank you so much because I actually really, really love this uh, brow wax. It is the only product that I've been putting through my brows ever since I discovered this. I've literally scraped every last bit of uh, what was in here. I even removed the stopper and that is not something that I do very often. I just love the effect that this has on my brows. N not many products can really hold my unruly brows in place and this one really holds up. It holds up really well throughout the day. I already have another tube open of this and um, I think unless I discover something that is even superior to this in the coming months this will be the only thing that you're ever going to see through my brows. Um, the rest of the items that I have here are all related to skincare. Oh, maybe this one is sort of still related to makeup. So this is the Garnier 2-in-1 waterproof makeup remover. So I use this in combination with another makeup remover from them because this is their by face like uh, oil mixed with a more liquid face makeup remover that is supposed to remove more waterproof type makeup. There are other Fashion like oil based yeah. makeup the way I use this is I have the bigger bottle. The only reason I'm not using only this is because I find it a little bit too expensive for the amount that you get because this bottle contains, what is it, 200? Oh no, 125 mils of product, whereas there are bigger bottles of makeup removers. Like think of something of the, like their um, iconic micellar water is either 450 or 500 mils of product. Uh, so this is expensive and you don't really get a lot from it and with the speed that I go through this I would basically be uh, needing a new bottle every two months or something so the way I go about this is I buy one of their bigger cheaper bottles that are also more suitable for removing hardcore makeup then I will remove most of my makeup and I will only put a few drops of this on my little makeup pad I will um to, in order to remove my mascara because especially when I'm using my Estee Lauder little black primer my mascara is a little bit more difficult to remove most of my makeup will already be off by the time that I apply a little bit of this but I use this as a little bit of like an extra mask. I love me a good clay mask and I've been using the Freeman face masks for like many many years this one happens to be my favorite the avocado and oatmeal because it's just such a fun color and it's such a good mask you know it just really removes or like removes a bit of the impurities from your skin and tightens your pores if you have a bit more uh, enlarged pores like I do so you know for someone of my skin type a clay mask like this is basically an indispensable part of my skincare routine and the rest here are all skincare products from Paula's Choice first we have this uh, big bottle of the 2% BHA liquid exfoliant with salicylic acid again a product that is an absolute staple in my skincare has been in my rotation for several years um, and is in constant rotation in my uh, skincare because again unclogs and shrinks in large pores smooths and evens skin tone lightweight liquid absorbs quickly check check and check everything that my skin my skin type really requires and then we have a, one of my absolute favorite products from Paula's Choice which is the anti-aging eye cream she has a couple of eye creams or at least two eye creams in her uh, lineup right now and I have her other one in my rotation right now and I don't like it as much as I like this one but I think for a lot of people the reason I like this may be a reason you're going to dislike it this is extremely extremely thick so if you have very very dry under eyes and you want to put an eye cream in the evening that you can still feel is hydrating your under eyes in the morning then you need this but this is so thick that you really need to like make an actual effort to even spread it out on your skin because it remains like a ball uh, and you have to like smoosh it a little bit between your fingers, warm it up and then dab it underneath your eyes because it is that thick. And the other one that I have from her now, while it's fine and I'm sure that it's also very hydrating, is just much more lightweight and I don't feel like it's doing the same amount of heavy lifting for my under eyes as this one. So as soon as the other one is finished, I'm probably going to repurchase this one. I love this. 
And finally, we have something that I received as a full-size gift with purchase some time ago. So I actually have the feeling that it might be a product that is discontinued. That's usually what they will do when a product is going out of their line. They will give away like full-size products from this um, to their loyal customers or probably everyone, I'm not really sure. But anyway, this is the Intensive Wrinkle Repair Retinol Serum with licorice and kelp. Obviously, I wasn't going to say no to a free full-size product with my purchase, least of all if it contains retinol, my absolute favorite active in my skincare routine. So this was fine. Uh, it took me quite a while to finish it because I have a lot of other types of actives in my routine. So I uh, alternate between them, but this was very pleasant, uh, very nice on the skin. I'm not really sure if and why she has discontinued it, but it served the purpose and I really enjoyed it. Would I purchase this over my 1% retinol? Absolutely not, but this was still quite enjoyable. Not much more to say about yeah. it. After almost an hour of rambling, finally here we are, the end of this video. Uh, do let me know if you have any thoughts to share on any of the products that I purchased from the monthly roundup part or from the empties. As usual, I love to hear uh, uh, from you, your experiences, your opinions. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye! 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 Bye!